I make a lot of videos on cleaning and decluttering, kind of like practical hacks that you can do to have a clean and tidy home. However, I never want to send the message that you need to have a perfect home because at the end of the day, I am not here to help you have a perfect home. I am here to help you love your home. In whatever state that is, whether it's a little messy, a little bit cluttered, maybe it's not decorated the way that you want, maybe it's not updated, it doesn't matter because today I am sharing five ways to love your imperfect home and this is going to make you see your home in a whole new light. It has truly helped me. I moved into this house about 13 years ago. My house is built in the early 1900s, and there's a lot of quirks. The people who were here before us, they did some strange, questionable updates that I would not have picked, I would not have done. And it took me a long time to really love the home that we're living in. But today, I love it so much. I have completely shifted how I think about things. I'm gonna give you my secrets. I think these are going to help you a lot if you feel the same way. My first tip is to work with what you have. And I, I need to explain this one, but once you learn it, it's gonna be life-changing for you. Honestly, when I learned this, my entire perspective of my home changed. We have certain things, I do and you do probably, have things in your home that you just don't really love, you wouldn't have picked, but you can't change them, right? Like, unless you're gonna do a huge renovation, this is what you have. You need to learn how to live with them. What I used to do is I had these things, and I'll give you some examples, I, I had them and I tried to decorate around them and almost camouflage or conceal them. Well, guess what? It doesn't work. It only makes them stick out like a sh sore thumb. Instead of working against it, you need to work with what you have. This is especially true for things like countertops, tiles, your flooring, any of the things that are foundational to your home that are not gonna really be changed anytime soon. In the back of my house, I have this reddish brownish tile and I didn't really, I don't really love it, okay? It's just a color that I wouldn't have picked. Well, when I first did my bathroom, I said, well, let me paint it a color that I just love. And even though it clashes with the tile, I'm just gonna paint it that way to distract people from looking at the tile. Well, guess what? It looked terrible. My bathroom looked terrible for years. I recently repainted it. I did it this beautiful teal color that completely complements the brick. It completely complements the pedestal sink that I have in there, which I also don't love. But the blues and the teals and the red, oh my God, it looks perfect in there. I love it so much. And that's working with what I I have instead of against it. Another example, in my kid's bathroom, I have these blue tiles and I was thinking like, I don't really like these. These aren't very modern. They look kind of strange. But then I just suddenly had this thought that I should really just embrace these tiles. They're actually quite unique and they're very interesting. You don't see these in a lot of homes. And instead of working against those tiles, I found this really pretty white paint that complements the tile color. I also got a shower curtain in that same color. And now I have this really, what I think looks nice, combination of blue and white. Because what happens when you work with what you have and you start incorporating it into how you decorate and pulling in the colors, then then it starts to look like intentional. It starts to look really cohesive and nice and a, like a nicely designed feature that you intentionally place there. When you make something that you don't like, when you do something to it to make it look intentional, it suddenly shifts into something that you actually end up liking. The next one is to focus on what is good. In any home, there is always something that you can find that's good, I promise you. Maybe it's a wall color, maybe it's a certain feature, maybe it's a layout. The reason why we're gonna focus on what's good about it is because when you focus on the good things, suddenly all of the other things that you don't like as much, they suddenly seem a lot smaller. And I have quite a few things in my home that I do not like, but I have to tell you, over the last many years, I have been focusing so much on the things that I do like that when I was scripting this video, I was having a hard time remembering the things that I originally didn't like. And if you do have something specific that you don't like, why don't you look at that item and try to focus on something about it that you do like? Because you can always find something. I'm gonna give you some examples. This is what I did. In my master bathroom, I have these speckled tiles. They're brown, beige, white, kind of speckled tiles. And when we first bought the house, I didn't really love them. I didn't think they looked very modern. I thought it looked a little bit dreary. And I just focused on how much I didn't like them every day. Since then, now I've started focusing on the fact that, number one, they're really easy to keep clean. Okay, they're really easy to keep looking clean. They do not show all of the 
soap scum and mold and dirt and all of the things that you find in a bathroom. So I find it's easier to keep my bathroom looking clean. If those tiles were black or all white, like a lot of bathrooms are, I don't think I could keep it looking clean. And I think I actually might really not enjoy that. The other thing is these tiles in my bathroom are super immersive. So what I mean by that is when you go into the bathroom, it's floor to ceiling of these same tiles. And it just creates this immersive experience in your bathroom. And creating immersive experiences is actually one of the ways that designers tell you to make your home feel more luxurious. So ways you can make your home feel a little more immersive if you choose to do this, you can paint, for example, a room all in one color from the baseboards, the wall, walls and the ceilings. That's a cool trick that a lot of people do and that just immerses you into the room. Another thing you can do if you have a hallway and you have lots of paintings in there, try to do all of the paintings with the same color family of frame and that feels really immersive. It's just a great way to create some luxury in your home. Another thing in my home that I used to really dislike, I even put it in a video which I will link it if you want to watch it after this one, is my black granite countertops. I they show every speck of dirt. I am constantly having to wipe them. But you know what? Then I started thinking, what do I like about these countertops? And the thing that I enjoy so much is that I can take anything out of my oven. I can take a 400 degree casserole dish and I can stick it right on top of my countertop with no problem. In fact, I do this multiple times a week. I am very happy I don't have to treat my counters with kid gloves. This next one I think is really important and it is to let go of how you think your house should look. I know there are a lot of amazing houses out there. You may have one. I see them on YouTube. In fact, even when I was beginning to start my YouTube channel, I was a little bit worried that my house just wasn't quite up to par. And then I pushed that thought aside and I just said, we need to let go of this idea of what perfect houses should, should look like because you know what? They look different. They don't all look the same. And they would be super boring if they did. My house has a lot of interesting flaws and features that you might not find in other homes and I've just learned to embrace them. I've embraced things like the old woodwork that I have. I have really nice baseboards and really interesting woodwork. I have these very cool pocket doors that we love. I've got the brickwork. I love the brickwork. So maybe your home isn't the light, bright, white, airy home that we all see out there and that we see on YouTube, but you know what? It's our home and you should find the things that you love and embrace them. I mentioned my house was built in the early 1900s. One of the things I've come to embrace is its quality. They don't build homes the same way that they used to, and I see it in the quality of how this home was built, and I'm very appreciative for that. The next one I'm gonna tell you may be surprising, but it is true, and if you think back into your life, you're gonna realize how true it is. The funny thing is, the way that our brains work, we never remember what our homes look like. You know what we remember? We remember what we experienced in the home and what happened in the home. Just try it now. Just try to think of the last place you lived. Can you actually picture the decor? Can you really see that home very clearly in your mind? It's really hard for me. We were in a condo before we moved in here and I have a few pictures and sometimes I look at the pictures and I'm like, gosh, I don't remember that at all. But you know what I do remember? I remember things like my daughter taking her first steps in that house. I remember on her first birthday, we got her a balloon and she was chasing it all over the house. I remember my husband proposing to me in that condo. At the end of the day, when you look back on your memories and you look back on your life, trust me, you're not gonna remember the decor. You're not gonna remember your countertops or your tiles. You're just gonna remember the memories and the fun times that you had. And maybe you'll remember bits and pieces of the decor, but honestly, not enough to make it worth worrying about now. And the fifth way that you are going to love your imperfect home is to practice gratefulness. And listen, I know everybody talks about gratefulness and that you need to practice it, blah, blah, blah. Well, listen, gratefulness is a choice and it's actually something that you need to practice because it's almost like a muscle. If you don't do it, you forget and then you're not grateful. I have some easy ways you can do this. One of the things I want you to do is go around your home and find some everyday items that you are thankful for. I will tell you, just this morning, I was pulling things out of my dryer and they were warm and fluffy and I just had this surge of gratitude that I have a dryer in my house. I've lived in different apartments and things where I used to have to go somewhere to do my laundry. In college, I used to have to go to a laundromat. I had an apartment where I had to go down in the basement and do my laundry. I am just so thankful to have these everyday things now that I might just ordinarily take for granted. Even your oven, think about how wonderful it is to be able to put in raw food and then you come out and you get this delicious meal. Or running water, I mean, you really just think of the everyday things that you have and think how grateful you are to have them because if you didn't have them, your life would look very different. 
Another thing I like to do to be grateful is on a particularly rough weather day, like today it's raining outside and I just look outside and it's pouring out there and I think to myself, I am very thankful that I have a roof over my head. I do not have to be out in that weather. I have this safe, comfortable place that I can be inside. I can be safe from the weather. So anytime it's super hot, cold, raining, snowing, just try to think to yourself, I don't have to be out there. I can be under my roof and I can be in my nice, comfort, comfortable home. And then another thing I want you to do is remember that feeling when you come home from a long trip and you just walk into your house and you just feel so happy to be home and you get into your bed and you feel so good to be in your own bed and have a good night's sleep. Try to harness that feeling every day. Just think back to those times and how you felt and try to daily think about that feeling of how much you missed your home and how happy you were to be back in it. When I'm away, I always miss my kitchen, my stuff, definitely my bed. So just try to think about that feeling and how comfortable your home is. Okay guys, those are five ways to love your perfectly imperfect home. I hope it helped you. I'm going to go ahead and link a video if you want to keep on watching. Go ahead and click on it and I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.